welcome. 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 Good evening. We welcome you to this space whether you're physically or virtually present. Our community of Somerville, neighboring cities, people near and far, you are welcome in this space. This is a space of mourning. This is a space for healing. This is a space for action and we welcome you. Who am I? Tracy Pratt, a 10 year resident of Somerville and an educator in a very nearby public school system, but that's not important right now. The larger question is, who are we? Who are we? It's just us, Somerville. Who are we? Just us, Somerville. Who is just us? We are a group of Somerville, Massachusetts residents of color. We are using this group and this space to build community among people of color in Somerville to ensure our collective voices are heard in our, in our city and we are looking for other black and brown voices to join us. Why are we here? To remind you that we exist we have a voice and we will not be silenced. We're gathered, in, we're gathered in peace to make sure that you understand that the murder of George Floyd, the murder of Breonna Taylor, and the murder of Ahmaud Aubrey were collectively the last straw, the straw that broke our backs. Our backs, those of black Americans, have been breaking on the soil of what we now call the United States for over 400 years. But on May 25th, 2020, as a white police officer dug his knee into the neck of George Floyd for eight minutes, 46 seconds, a shot was heard around the world. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. My neck hurts. My back hurts. Everything hurts. I can't breathe. Mama, this shot round the world has sparked a revolution. And this brothers, sisters, and allies in this struggle is why we are here. And thank you, Nelson and Ben, and whoever put this event together. Thank you, everyone, for being here. My name is William Barr. I'm one of the city councilors at large for the city of Somerville. I want to tell you that it's not easy being black in this day and age. And as a black man with a black wife and two black kids and a black public official, it's pretty certain that I can't help but think about the violence and the brutality that I saw, as well as the failure of the state to help communities of color during COVID-19 on both personal and societal level. This failure of the system against black people stretches back to slavery, to Jim Crow, and now the new Jim Crow. George Floyd's murder drew attention because his death was captured on video. We know many other black people who continue to be brutalized don't make the news. During my time on the city council, I have fought to provide a voice for the voiceless in our community. Our undocumented neighbors, our black, brown immigrant owners, business owners that are facing gentrification in the city, 
and fought for equity in police promotions and working class residents, just to name a few. In the upcoming year, Somerville will face a budget shortfall, like all major cities in the United States due to COVID-19. I propose we reevaluate the money we spend on policing and instead redirect part of that budget. We should redirect part of that budget to provide living wage for our paraprofessionals who are largely made up of women of color. I will even go further to make it clear. That is my line in the sign for this budget season. I will not vote to approve the budget if this is not in that budget. Together with my colleagues, JT Scott and Lance Davis, I just submitted an ordinance just before coming to this gathering. An ordinance establishing a police commission to oversee the police department's policies and procedures and a community police review agency to investigate complaints of police misconduct and recommend discipline. And I must say, if you're here and you're a person of color, I need your help. Please stay involved in, the, in community activities. And don't let your voice be ignored or silenced. Let's amplify our voices and messages and demand to be heard by those in power. Please think about running for office, because I'm all too aware as the only person of color on the city council. Take risks. Reach out to me for help. Let's get more people of color in power in this city. I'm still learning and thinking about how I can lead better on these issues moving forward. I want to again thank you for being here and your active role in the fight against racism, hate, and injustice in our community. Let us take this moment to remember George Floyd and to carry on his memory in our hearts as we fight for justice and equality. Thank you and may God bless you all. I'm starting over even though, let me be clear, I don't want to be here tonight. I'm tired, y'all. We've done this cycle too many times. Black people are executed for the crime of being black. We express our outrage, you pledge unity, we all become more vocal about equity, and if we're very, very, very lucky, we might make some low-hanging policy change. And then the next news story hits, and six months later, we're right back here again. And y'all, I just can't do it anymore. I've run out of ways to say that being black shouldn't be a death penalty. I am tired of spending my nights asking if white people could please just stop killing us. I'm exhausted from giving speeches, writing articles, protesting, marching, drafting policy, drafting policy, having meetings, all of this stuff just for the right to walk down the street in peace? Because 400 years in, we're not even talking about full equality. How can we be when, in Somerville as in everywhere else in the world, power is still concentrated in white hands? In fact, to hear some tell it, we're not even talking about trying to not kill black people. The policy proposals currently out there ask us to accept that policy changes, by the way, made for us, not with us, that make it more likely that someone might be punished if they kill a black person, 
It's supposed to be a victory? I, I just, I can't do it. I can't tell you how to win. I don't want to be here tonight. And I sure as hell don't want to be here again next year. But that's the path we're headed on, Somerville. The question we must ask and answer is not how to increase accountability when black people get shot. The question isn't even how to have fewer black people get shot. The, Summer, the question Somerville must answer, the question Somerville is 177 years late in answering, is how do we have a city where the one third of us who are non-white are equal partners in policy and governance? Racist policing is a symptom, but it's not the disease. Not in Milwaukee, not in Nashville, not in Somerville. Racist systems are the disease. Yes. And without curing the disease, we are doomed to play whack-a-mole with the symptoms. Without curing the disease, there can be no equity. Without equity, there can be no justice. And as we all know, no justice, no peace. Thank you all for coming here this evening. Um, they asked me to give a little story about um, an incident, and so I had to think back. And there was just so many racist um, incidents, anti-blackness incidents that have happened to me since I've lived in this city, um, coming back from 1990, 1995. And, but one that stood out was when I was bringing my young kids, my twins, up the escalators in Des Davis Square, a little white girl stuck her tongue out at us and said, ha ha, you don't have a daddy. And I looked at her and I looked at my kids and I'm like, where is this girl getting this from? And we all know that must be coming from her home, right? Because why would this little girl say, you don't have a daddy? So we all saw this man being killed by this police officer in cold blood. So as we continue to think about the time it took for this officer to kill this man, let's also think about the individuals that stood around and watched for eight minutes and 46 seconds. How did they feel? What was their fear? The political system, their fear to just stop one of them? As we all stand around, do you think you could watch someone be killed? It happened. Today, we don't have to stand and watch that anymore, right? Eight minutes and 46 seconds, we're all talking about it. But think about the individuals that had to watch that in fear, numbness, going through their bodies. They just didn't know what to do. It was disbelief that this was happening in front of them. Our children are watching it on television. We're all stuck at home watching this over and over and over again. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do that's different? What would you have done? So... My call of action, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to continue making a difference. I am working with, collaborating with Somerville and Medford, and we're building a group called the Collect, the, it's so new, the, <laughs> the Creative Collective, the Creative Coalition Collective. And it's for African-American, black, brown, indigenous people of color to work to build our social and political capital. And that is my call of action. That's what I'm gonna do to make a difference. I work at Harvard. I've been there for over 20 years. And um, in the last week, I've so, seen so many emails come out about solidarity. And I wanna see what's gonna happen on the other end because as Everybody of before me and probably behind me, we're going to talk about everything that we've done, things that we talk about. 
Let's not continue talking about that. Let's do something. If you don't know where to go, my name's Yvette Wilkes. I produce the Hip Hop Festival in Somerville. I've been a member of Somerville Media Center. I'm on the board at Somerville Media Center. I'm here to make a change. I'm here to work to make a change because I am the mother. I am the mother of 23 year old twins. And every morning that they went to school, I was scared that my kids may not come home. All because of the color of their skin. And when Obama won, Oh my gosh, I was so scared. So, we shouldn't be scared to raise our children, to have children. We shouldn't be scared. So I'm thanking you all for being here today. You won't see out of the lens of my eyes, but try to be conscious of what you're doing. Don't be a bystander. Don't stand around and let someone else disrespect someone. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Ben Echevarria, and I'm a lifelong resident of Somerville. And I'm not here to talk about my story, because my story is way too often like everyone else's that, is, that has spoken. And you got it, how's this? All right. So while we were putting this thing together, we realized something. We keep hearing about narratives that everybody else wants to talk about. And the question came up, what do we want? What do people of color want? So we came out with a beginning of a list of things we would like to see. Because as Andre said, the killing is just a symptom of a larger problem. So we have a list of things that we would like to see incorporated. And I would love to introduce Kenya, who will give that list. everyone. My name's Kenya. I'm 19 years old. I've lived in Somerville for my entire life and I'm also tired. I see all of you here today and I want to ask you, what are you doing beyond standing there? What are you doing for me? What are you doing for us? And I will now read off the list of demands this group has come up with. I want Somerville to stop co-opting black and brown narratives. Allyship is to stand with communities of color to work on issues together. We have a voice. You better stop using your voice to talk over us. This current demand to end racial justice needs to be centered around communities of color. Talk to your local community before deciding how to act. Stop deciding what's best for us. <laughs> Secondly, we demand a civilian review committee that looks at policies and has mostly people impacted by the police. Policies that allow the use of force need to be examined on top of policies that create potential interactions with my communities and the police officers. Stop sending people of color and their businesses, ge stop gentrifying them out of our cities. East Somerville has not always looked like this. East Somerville, I used to call home, it looks a lot different now. The city used people of color to build the Green Line. Now people of color can no longer even live here. The city has further used eminent domain and urban renewal as tools to remove communities of color and minority-owned businesses. That makes me angry. It should make you angry, too. Hire people of color to full-time positions throughout the schools and city, including executive positions. No more hiring of 
friends. No more hiring of just because I knew them. Start hiring people of color who are qualified. Having people of color in key positions helps enhance city recommended policies. We call for better hiring practices and transparency when you're hiring. We ask that being hiring information be published quarterly with a breakdown of season, part-time and full-time positions, along with a special breakdown of executive or key positions within the city, along with demographics. These last two are especially important to me as someone who has gone through Somerville Public Schools. I am tired, my friends are tired of trying to speak up and no one listening and no one taking action. I am tired of using my voice to constantly beg for this school, city, and town to just listen to us and to act with us, not for us. Stop making decisions for us. Listen to what we're demanding. Yes. It starts with ending punitive practices that disproportionately impact low-income black and brown children in our schools. In a school district that talks so highly of its dedication to inclusion, Data from 2019 Somerville High School shows that 12.7% of students are black, but they make up almost 28% of students disciplined in our high school. Meanwhile, almost 32% of, of the high school is white, but make up only 18% of students disciplined. Honoring the diversity of our schools means taking actions when our system continue to fail our students. We've been demanding compassion, transparency, and action for a while now. Maybe you just don't care to pay attention. <laughs> Lastly, end the police presence in our schools. no place for police in our schools and the steps and cadet programs within our schools. The 2020 Somerville budget, in the 2020 Somerville budget, police listed that 21 steps officers made 894 school visits in 2019 as an accomplishment. That is almost five visits a day from an armed adult in our schools. Imagine how disruptive it is to have someone who has a gun at their side to my learning experience, to my, the learning experience of my friends who have had to witness police brutality since we were very young in our communities, especially as someone who lives in the Mystic Housing Project. Imagine how disruptive it is to have a police officer near me when I'm trying to learn. We have witnessed police brutality across this country since we were very young. It is traumatic to have them in our schools. Additionally, that same budget allocates approximately $115,000 to create a new police cadet program that will prepare diverse candidates, including Somerville High School recruits for careers in public safety. Oh. Why aren't you giving us the opportunity to help our communities in different ways? $115,000 could go a long way towards programs that stop perpetuating cycles of trauma. Yes. Systemic... <laughs> Systemic racism does not end just because you have a few black and brown and low income police officers enforcing the laws that were never meant to serve and protect their own communities to begin with. That is all, and I just want to add you guys have no idea what it's like to grow up as a brown girl in this city. It is constantly being told, we care about you. I hear you. I want to know what you're feeling. 
but constantly being ignored, being pushed out, and no one taking action except for when I can adequately word things because I sound so eloquent. I am tired. You should feel my rage and you should feel it with me and for me and for my community. Thank you. Keep clapping for Kenya. Keep clapping for Kenya. Thank you. As we get ready to go into the silent vigil portion, you've heard us speak. You know who we are. This is a vigil among many. There have been protests among many. But the real question is, after all the marching, after all the moments of silence, what are you going to do? Think about that. If you want to join with us, because we know that the work is just beginning, we invite you to like our Facebook page. It is Just Us Somerville. You can find it, you can like it, you can share it with your friends because there is much work to do. Please say these names with me. George Floyd. George Floyd. Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor. Ahmad Aubrey. Ahmad Aubrey. There are so many more names that we can say, and the list goes on and on. But each and every person that belongs in on that list are in our hearts at this moment. We are going to have eight minutes, 46 seconds of silence. We invite you, if you have your phones and want to put your phone light on or have a candle app to do that. We invite you, you can stand, you can kneel, you can sit, whatever you're doing. But in this eight minutes of 46 seconds, think about how that must have felt to have a knee, and really six knees, because there were three police officers on him, on you, for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Following that time, we will dismiss in silence. We'll walk away in silence. We want to see you walk away in silence, because George Floyd, didn't have a voice after that moment. So we are his voice now. Time starts now. <laughs> 